Good morning, folks. Today we have Can't Miss Articles. Reviewing them is a reason I'm about an hour late this morning. You'll definitely want to make sure you're awake in about 90 seconds. First, we're at spaceweathernews.com, and the last day of our star looks relatively benign. We will see one piece of eruptive activity on the Earth-facing half, top left. Small filament that had just crested into view caught the Earth in his peripherals and said, Nope. I don't think so. You guys turn on in if you want. I'm going home. Forgot his magnet shoes, however, and never really got out of the corona. Solar flaring remains dismal, but at least now the tiny lone sunspot we saw yesterday has a couple friends. They'll need at least 12 hours to develop, and we'll be watching. Earth's magnetic field is utterly quiet yet again as the solar wind remains relatively calm and within normal range. Blips here and there, but certainly nothing major. Three days ago, I was thinking we'd be in the stream now due to those leading portions of the coronal hole, but if it looks like they spread out and might not send their wind our way until the trailing portion, which does sit on the equator, faces us, you would be right. means the leading portions of the stream have missed our planet. Main impact should be coming early this coming week. Before we get to the top news, here's the top photo of the last day from A.J. Bagwell in Texas. We call this the Run for Shelter selfie. Okay, you ready? Folks, this makes nearly a dozen papers on electromagnetic precursors to the Japan earthquake and Fukushima tsunami disaster of 2011. Double that number have been written about various large earthquakes across the world in general, with everything from the magnetic fields, electric currents, ionospheric anomalies getting involved, and yes folks, who knows why Ben got excited to see the word thermal there in the title. Yes, that means outgoing long wave radiation. This is the fourth paper claiming OLR should be investigated as a quake precursor, and that is in fact exactly what we use. If you haven't seen the September 10th update at the top of spaceweathernews.com challenge, it is time to pay attention. Especially since the mainstream is utterly focused on satellites and space-based observations. This is a pretty good paper about the use of CubeSats to find these anomalies, but why do that when we've got GPS devices, magnetometers, and EMF hardware built into almost every cell phone on the planet? There aren't many precursors they wouldn't be able to pick up somehow, which is why that will be a piece of the disaster prediction app coming this winter. It does go way beyond earthquakes to space weather risks for tropical storms, technology, and human health. We discussed the app a bit more in yesterday's Fly on the Wall podcast posted to the premium section of suspiciousobservers.org. We also solved a Pluto mystery, saw more on electromagnetism and health, included induced lucid dreaming, then we ran down a confirmed conspiracy and wound up sharing some interesting big data on the election cycle in the U.S. We've got pressure and radar forecasts here, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.